Greetings and welcome once again to another Heart of the Witch's Path podcast. I'm your co-host, Helen. And I'm Kathy. <laughs> and we're giving silent, you know, clues, silent to, clues each to each other. Um, welcome to podcast 202. And today's podcast, we are picking back up on the rune study that Kathy and I started a bit ago. We got, I I think I got behind and didn't fi- didn't read because I think you read this and yeah I read this I was and then I was waiting for you yeah so yeah um so just to kind of bring you up to speed Kathy and I decided that um we would read together a book called Taking Up the Runes a complete guide to using runes in spells ritual divination and magic by Diana Paxson awesome book by the way yeah, it's it's very interesting so far. And so we did a podcast. Um, the book setup is such that the chapters are broken up so that you study two runes at once. Right. So the first uh, podcast that we did, um, we covered Fehu and Uruz. Do you happen to remember what number that was? I don't, but I will link it below. And I also have a playlist started right. for our rune series. Because we're trying to be organized and do playlists for all our topics. Exactly. Um, so this so this podcast will be a part of that playlist. So you can go back. Uh, but I will make sure to specifically link down below the first uh, podcast. So anyhow, the book is set up um, so that she covers two runes a month. A month, and we are dealing with the Elder Futhark set of runes. Yes, of which there are twenty four. So just to kind of right do a little background up to speed sure so this chapter oh and so so you've got the chapter that covers the two runes right then in another section of the book um under a rituals section she has different things there might be a song prayers meditation things like that that go with your two runes right because this is set up to work as a group of two or more where your initial meeting is to talk about how you're going to do the meetings and then you study the two first two runes for a month and then you get together and you do the ritual and the meditation and Mm -hmm. then you you know go your separate ways and you say hey the next two are are these and then you spend a month individually going over those runes and then come back together and do the the ritual and the and i i remember from the first chapter where she talked about that you should, one thing that like stood out to me is that you should take something like index cards Mm -hmm. and in red marker or pen or whatever, you should draw the runes that you're studying and like have that in a place where it's visible for you. I remember, I remember that because red goes with the runes. Right. Right. And there's, there's a lot of information. She, I believe in the, in the meditation, ritual section she talks about marking the boundaries of the room with runes and things of that nature so it, it's a very in-depth study and and mm-hmm. again totally recommend it but we've done the first part which were fehu and Arus, and now we're moving on to the second chapter which is thurzaz and ansus and so because of that we're not going to have um we're not going to have a correspondence of the episode because these two runes will be our correspondence. All right. So look, it's like an in-depth study of a correspondence. Yeah. Check that out. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> so, okay. So uh, one thing that really stands out for me in terms of what Paxson does is she talks about how, like, like she's not just giving you her meaning and... Um, experience with the runes she's giving you the historical meanings and and what other authors like um, snorri and um what their deal what they thorson you know so if you if you deal with the the handbook of rune magic by edred thorson she's talking about that within her text right which is another good book also right um so i appreciate that because it's 
it's almost like a one-stop shopping. Right, right. You know what I mean? Because she's talking about what other well, authors before her. I think the handbook for rune magic deals with it a little bit differently and deals with it, I guess, more centered towards using runes for magic. So I, I would recommend reading both, but probably a better place to start would be the taking up the runes. Mm -hmm. So, and, and one thing that she does reference, well, the, both books do reference is the Havamal, which is the rune poems. So, um, she, she references that quite a bit in the text. Mm -hmm. And that's actually something that I've recently printed and been reading. Um, Have you? yeah, yeah. I formatted it in a small, it's actually in my purse <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, it's like formatted smaller gotcha. so that I can carry it easier. Like it's the size of. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you would consider this size of paper, yeah. but it's, it's an eight and a half and 11 by 11 folded in half. <laughs> and I made it like a little book. There you go. <laughs> so, um, so the first rune that is covered in the chapter is Thurizaz or Thurizaz, as I was seeing, you know, another pronunciation, you know, as with many things, right. Plenty of ways Ser to pronounce nunos, it. Care nunos. <laughs> there's, there's different ways. Pick of... a pronunciation. Try to stick with it. Right. <laughs> so uh, let's see. This Thurzaz is Thor's, Thor's rune. Thor. Yeah, it's Thor's rune. Right. And it deals with um, supernatural beings usually monstrous. Yeah, it, it deals with protection against those and and the actual damage that can be done by those. It's kind of a kind of a weird rune because it's both the danger and the protection mm -hmm. of the danger. Mm -hmm. And in the chapter Paxton talks about how um Thor slew the giants, the the Jotnar um, but he didn't kill all of them. He left he left a few alive right. enough that man could survive. Right, because the power mm -hmm. needed to be balanced. Mm -hmm. um, she, and I'll quote the text. The raw power of nature must be balanced, not obliterated. And there is some evidence that the Jotnar also received offerings, especially from those journeying in the wilderness. So you can't really get rid of that power that is dangerous but you have to control it mm -hmm. and that's part of what this rune is mm -hmm. it also deals with like the magical relationship between spirits and the spells that protect against them right so there's there's a lot of that dichotomy yeah in this there's room your word. <laughs> yeah it's dichotomy yeah so i think that that's really interesting for this rune and to give um i was thinking um, before I came over here to record this podcast, I was thinking that I would try in the description box to put pictures mm -hmm. of the runes. Um, but to give you, in, in case I can't do that, and in case you can't go Google, Google. an image. So she'll be online anyway. watching this anyway. <laughs> Thurizaz is depicted as a vertical line with uh, almost like a, a tooth. It's like a thorn. Yeah, coming a thorn. coming out of the yeah. center of the line. Yeah, and, and again, it's it's you can be harmed by the thorns, but they also use thorn bushes to keep the dangers away from settlements. So, right. Mm -hmm. So it's really more of that dichotomy. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So so it's power. It's it's at raw action, potency, strength on the physical plane. Um, it's applied power. Uh. There, you know, there's a lot of things this can be used for. It's it's the power that's regeneration and fertility. Right. And Peter Jameson, um, his interpretation of the rune is that the Thurses or the Jotnar, which the, the meaning of Thurizaz in the Teutonic language means... Um, means giant, right? It mean that which it which are the Jotnar, um, and so, um, and that I that I got from the Thunder Wizard podcast, right? Which right. are amazing. Yes, they are. <laughs> totally recommend them too. Um, so anyhow, the the Jotnar are represented, or rep, they represent elemental, unconscious, irrational, and chthonic. 
horses. Yeah, that's because that's always fun. That's some intense things. So, um, so general for Thunder Wizard, his interpretation, and he's done a lot of academic study right on the runes and the pantheon, the Teutonic people in general. And so for him, this rune is about the deities and it's about change. Mm -hmm. And so it's about that that living together. Right. Um in and finding a harmony right. and that and the balance. And I think that that's what really for me personally, that's what my life that's what I'm striving for. I'm striving for the balance. I'm striving to bring that Thurzaz mm -hmm. balance into my life. Right. So that's a pretty powerful rune. I need that tattooed. <laughs> need to add it oh, to the number of tattoos. You have tattoos. to be really, really careful <laughs> about what what kind of runes you tattoo on your body. It's kind, kind of a, a, a theme of be careful what you wish for. Well, I, I wish for balance. It's, so. <laughs> but it's more than just balance, too. Right. It's those cathodic forces. So mm -hmm. do you really want to bring that into your life? You really have to do a lot of meditation and thought before you go putting runes on your body. Oh, yeah. 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 So, again, this rune is all about Thor. So Thor is, uh, obviously, he's a god. He is the god that brought storms, whose rains fed the crops and banished the powers that would destroy them. His lightning fertilizes the soil. He was the favorite deity of farmers. And there are many stories about his strength, often humorous, as we all know Thor is funny. <laughs> um, he lives in the present and deals with problems forcefully and immediately. And I think part of the reason that he is a favorite among farmers is because this rune also had a lot to do with weather working. Right. And that kind of makes sense with the ritual right. section because the ritual has to do with weather working right, right. and it, right and it has to do with bringing the rain and controlling the floods and so that kind of makes sense i mean he's the thunder god he is the one that the farmers would say okay i need rain right pray i'm praying to thor bring bring the rain but don't flood my crops out right kind of a thing. right it's the same thing it's it's that power that has the the potential of destruction but controlling that power. exactly Right. right. Those primal forces. Of... Right. So the book states that Thurzaz is the third dynamic aspect of the force of fertility introduced by Fehu and Aruz, the third stage in the process of creation described in the Younger Edda. Yes. So this does go with the first two runes. The runes kind of flow one into another, really. Right. I think they kind of tell a story as they you know, right. come to, you know, as they, as you travel through them. And I think that's probably why you see the groupings of the first eight and the second eight right. and the third eight. Because they really do deal with each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Side note, I have not, I don't know if I've shared this with you or not. Um, I've been doing purging. I have right. shared that with you. Right. So I was going through, I was cleaning out um, some filing cabinets and I came across some old paperwork. Mm -hmm. I came across, I took mythology in high school and was first introduced to the runes in that mythology class. Really? And I found my handouts uh. with the, the Elder Futhark runes and a poem. The poem, I don't... I don't remember if, exactly if it was the Havamal, but I left them out because yeah. I want to incorporate them right. into my book of shadows. Right, right. Because I'm like, mm, Helen was a little witch even back then because <laughs> I kept this because Sorry. it's been a minute yeah. <laughs> since I was in high school. A minute so, or two. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Right. So that's the, that's the Thurzaz. Is there anything else you wanted to comment? Um, not, not as far as the meaning. There's some stuff regarding interpreting and using it mm -hmm. um, that we can skip through. Um, you can use it on a sharp object, such as a fossil tooth or an arrowhead, to uh, use it as a focus to draw out evil and a shaman shamanic extraction magic. Mm -hmm. um, you can scratch it into your skin or on a tree. You can use it in weather working. Mm -hmm. Uh, it can represent either Thor or the Jotnar, but be careful when invoking, again, be careful what you wish for, because 
the forces behind this rune are not really something that we can understand because they're not, they're, it wasn't mortals, the thought behind this. This is the forces of the gods, the Jotnar, and it's not really something that we can understand. So you'd have to be really careful using it. Um, Thor should be invoked as a balance whenever you're working with this to, to draw a hedge or a protection between you and these forces that could potentially do a lot of destruction. Mm -hmm. uh, it could, if you draw this rune in a reading, it could mean good luck or assistance, or it could be a warning to, to step back and take a look at where you're at and, and seek advice before you take, make decisions and take steps. It could be a warning not to just rush into things because you could get, you know, impaled upon the root, the thorns. Um, could indicate conflicts or uh, aggression. And I think that's, uh, could also indicate a need to shake up your situation. Um, it Or a warning that destructive tendencies need to be dealt with. Mm-hmm. Um, I've also kind of been looking at the Little Giant Encyclopedia of Runes um, by Sharona Knight. Um, and this one is kind of interesting because I like it gives you a like a quick correspondence yeah, breakdown. Um, so like the tree associated with it is the oak. Um, the herb is a house leek, which is interesting since I've been eating a lot leeks. of leeks lately. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> um, someone got me a really awesome vegan cookbook for Yule, <laughs> and there's a really wonderful soup recipe in there that has leeks. Right. So it's very good. Um, so gemstones associated with Thurzaz is bloodstone, garnet, red jasper, obsidian, onyx, and black tourmaline. Mm -hmm. um, the color is red. I'm just kind of like looking at Sure. Um, fire is the element. Power animals is the goat, which makes right, sense. Right. Um, I wish I could remember Thor's goat's names. Google it. Yeah. Yeah. Ram, dragon, hound, things of that nature. So, ooh, the tarot card associated is justice. Yeah, there's, um, well, this one's got up here on my little spreadsheet, it's got emperor. So it, I guess it really depends on what reference you're using. Yeah, who you're talking to. Yeah. Um, this also has animals like goat, ram, dragon, hound, cat, mosquito. Not really sure about that one. Element is fire. Yeah. Astrological signs are Mars and Libra. Mm -hmm. So things to think about when it comes to Thor's ass. Did mm -hmm. you want to... Go over the part of the ritual that had to do with that, or did you want to move on to Ansu's? Well, let's see. Let's let's go back to that page. Oh, looking at your yellow screen makes my pages look yellow. Sorry. I'll <laughs> um. Well, I think maybe we should just wait because I think it kind of covers all of it together. So let's talk about Ansu's, and then okay. let's talk about that the ritual. That works for me. How's that? Sure. How's that, guys? Does that sound good? Oh, thank you for changing. <laughs> I told you I would change it. I just, I, I looked up it. She's got her little, she's got a wonderful looking um, Excel spreadsheet with rune information on it. And she'd highlighted the two that were covering with a yellow. And I was looking at the screen for the longest time. And then to look down at my page, it like totally yellowed out my pages in a really strange way. So I changed it. Thank you. To green. <laughs> Where are we at? time wise oh uh, let's, let's flip over there and look have we're look. doing okay well okay. let's let's move along so so let's continue, let's continue. <laughs> we thought we were gonna have a bad day okay <laughs> let's continue so the other uh the other rune covered in this chapter would be ansu's and let's talk about what it looks like right it is kind of like an f with the arms hanging downward yes Capital F. Yes. Okay. Capital F with the arms hanging downward. So Paxson's meaning is a god mm -hmm. or oh. mouth. Because this rune has to do with communication. Mm -hmm. It is also Odin's rune. Yes. Odin's wisdom in communicating ecstasy. 
Right. Yes. So in in this description, the room could refer to either language or its source because they kind of go in hand hand in hand. Mm -hmm. um, it is the power of words to calm violence, providing the wisdom for warriors, referred to in the Anglo-Saxon poem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was that one called? Um, Saul the Havamal, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is the Havamal. Yeah. The Havamal. There's actually a section that Paxson quotes of the Habermal that uh, that was just really poignant enough to me that I highlighted the heck out of it. So I would like to share it. <laughs> How's that? Um, then I became fertile and grew in wisdom and waxed and did well. One word to another word led, led on. One word to another work. Or excuse me, one work to another work. And I think that this is, this is part of the growing, right? And the communication, right? Because What's you have to communicate in order to learn, right? Because Odin, the father, went to the primordial waters, the dark primordial waters, when he sacrificed himself upon Yggdrasil to get these runes to bring them back, right? And so he sacrificed himself to grow and to learn. And to pass this on so that we could grow and that we could learn. Right. And I think that that is when he talks about for being fertile, becoming fertile, that is taking that seed of knowledge, taking the rune right. and taking it in and to then grow in wisdom. And I think that's part of why this stood, stood out so much to me, you know, because one word to another, word led on. One work to another, work led on. Right. You know, so that that is very, it speaks to where I am in my path right now. Right, right, moving along. Mm -hmm. Right. So, something I found very interesting in the text of the book was, um, according to the Havamal, the wise man, man does not boast, does not tease his table mates at a feast, and does not waste words talking to fools. Mm -hmm. So you have this communication, but you don't waste it. Right. Right. Because part of, part of being wise is to, to know when to speak. And to know when not to speak. Right. 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 And I, it, it just, it can't, there's, there's like different things that are kind of like playing through my head right now, just kind of thinking about this and thinking about characters in movies and stuff in TV shows that are quiet yet when right. they speak, it means something. Exactly. Okay. The person that the character that really comes to mind and it might seem kind of crazy, but silent Bob. I was just thinking. <laughs> Yeah, because when he talks, he's really has something to say. Right. It's really important. So and everybody pays attention. Right. So we're talking about Silent Bob, aka Kevin Smith right. from Kevin Smith movies such as Clerks, Mall Rats, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Right. This character that that he played, that Kevin Smith played in his own films. Jason Meany. Right. He didn't he didn't want to Learn dialogue. So that was part of the reason why Bob was, <laughs> didn't say much. Because he was directing. Because he was busy directing. Right. But, you know, when he spoke. Right. Everybody stopped and listened. Right. Right. Because he didn't. <laughs> there, we, you let her there's, we have a visitor that wants yeah. to join us. She, yeah. She, it's that cat paw under the door. Come, Come on. on. Come on, noisy. This is Nala hello. is Nala is bringing us say hello to the peeps. Kitty <laughs> energy. <laughs> right. So, and Sue's. So it has to do with communication in general and Odin in particular. It's the force of creation. Yes. It's the song, rune of words, song, poetry, and incantation. Or the power of oratory, speech, and poetry. Consciousness, intelligence, communication, reason. Communication is really like the common word that anyone who's studied the words, studied the runes, comes back with. Right. Um, I wanted to look at... Now, what's really interesting, looking at the Thunder Wizard information, 
um, Ansu's directly um, translates to ancestor. And right. who do you look to when looking for guidance, looking for knowledge? We look to your ancestors. We look to our, right. We, and so he takes it to mean spiritual guidance. Right. And communication. Well, it is communication and I think specifically with the gods because it, it another meaning is uh, is prophecy. So you're you're getting information from the gods to use in your day to day life, you know, whether it is prophecy or or whether it's information, learning, knowledge. Mm -hmm. Th these are things that you're pulling from this rune and you can get it from the ancestors as well as the gods. And of course there's some cultures have ancestor worship. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it's the energy of prana. It is air. It's, right. it's an element of air because that medium carries sound. Mm -hmm. It is the rune of the Aesir and of Odin specifically, especially in its aspect as a source of the inspired ecstasy of poetry. Mm -hmm. And he's known to be a god of mental powers. Right. Right here. So therefore, it's associated with air, and it's associated with mercury, right? And it's also associated with the sphere of Had in the Kabbalah, in the Kabbalah right. studies. Um, it's also associated with Loki and Eoster. Um, astrological associations are Venus and Gemini. The tarot card that I have is Death. Um, um let me look and see. The what stone is Lapis. The animals are Wolf. A horse, raven, a yeah, horse, horse, falcon, hound, fox, snake, scorpion. Death. The death is listed in this little, this giant, yeah. little giant book as well. Yeah, that's a good reference, but I believe that has a blank room, and I just have to really double check my references on any reference that has a blank room because there was never a blank room. Right. Yeah. Right. So. Um, is there more in there that you want to? Well, the tree that it's associated with is the ash. Gemstones are sodalite, aqua, aquamarine, sapphire, lapis lazuli, labradorite, and jade. And the color is dark blue. So that's kind of nifty. Because I've, I've never really seen dark blue associated with Odin. Usually it's red and black right. colors. But Marla, what are you doing? She's exploring. So Yeah. So in using it in using Ansu's, um, in any in a reading it could mean a mental or creative activity in general, and verbal in particular, uh, the need for wisdom or spiritual power. Uh sorry, cat, fox. Yeah. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, it may relate to problems with breathing or the lungs or the actions in the wind. Mm -hmm. um, it has, if, if you're doing a practical reading, it can relate to communication and transmission or indicate that something with sources in the past, because wisdom sources, knowledge sources, um, communication between partners. It can also mean a separation from one's true spirit or communication problems or spiritual imbalance. One thing that I really found interesting and wanted to like try with you, like not in podcast, was um, Paxton talks about how it is, how Ansu's is the rune of word magic and again, the communication. Mm -hmm. And so there's, and so she's, she um, stresses that when you work with this rune that you should um, work on things to sharpen your wits and to train you in your word craft like scrabble or right or puzzles right and so she actually outlines a a metered out game hmm. of a, a, a word game that i thought was kind of interesting um well that's something that we could do in, in the next time the coven gets together and try that mm -hmm. that would yeah. be a good thing to try that might be it's really neat so there's like a little chant and what she's done is there are seed words that that there's one for each of the um, one for each of the rooms. Mm -hmm. And so what you do is you kind of have a leader who starts off and you start this chant and you put the seed word in and then there's two blank spaces. And so the 
the the people that you're studying with are supposed to you know call out what words associate with them so it's so it's it's about quickness and it's about like it's about word association right right you know so i thought that was kind of cool and would like to try that sure um and if you're looking at the book it's on page 62 yes just just to get that out there so should we look at the the ritual part yeah let's do that so um again uh she has this whole back section that corresponds to the front section where you go over the runes is the back section has to do with um doing a a ritual and, and establishing sacred space and you invoke and you do a spell casting and then a meditation and sometimes she has songs um, or poetry so in this particular chapter she has a couple of invocations and i'm going to read the one to thor because i thought it was very interesting Redbeard, firebeard, bringer of lightning, life-giving storm lord, lover of feasting, father of freedom, fighter most doughty. I'm sure I screwed that up. Donor, defender, dearly we need thee. Hear us, hero, hasten to help us. Gift thy great goat's gallop to bring. Prosper thy people, pour on earth plenty. Reign in abundance, right for the season. Now note that... In the invocation, she's stating right there, rain in abundance, but make it right for the season. Mm -hmm. Don't overload us. Don't don't give us too much of this power that we're asking for. <laughs> and know that we are not actually meant or intending to evoke anybody. No, no, no. <laughs> no, we're just reading these. Right. And, and, you know, it's raining today, so uh, I yes. don't know. It's raining in mid-Michigan. In Hello, January. January. <laughs> so there's also an evocation to... Right, she's calling it an evocation, but it's really an evocation. Um, to Odin. And so that one reads as, High-flying Hugin, hear us now. Munin, rememberer, meaning giver. Roving ravens, race to aid us. Wise forever, forgetting never. Blackbirds bring us wisdom's words. Odin, all father, ond, you are given. Mind and meaning may we master. Warden of words and wit and wisdom. Sacred song and spell inspire us. So those are pretty powerful evocations, I think. Yes, and I really think that the Odin one, specifically since I am working with him, that's something that I want to add to my Book of Shadows. And add right, to. yeah, I would say the same for the Thor, because I've been working with Thor. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting, this spell, because she has both a version A to bring the rain and a version B to stop the floods. So you would use whichever one is appropriate. Mm -hmm. And then there's a pretty long meditation. A really long meditation. Yeah, which I haven't actually done one of these meditations yet, and it seems like it would be kind of difficult to do <laughs> on your own. The first In the first one, we, um, we tried recording it so that we could do it to, so that we could listen to it together because what it what she's done is she's establishing these meditations where someone is supposed to act as the reader and they read through this meditation which is in a poetic form okay right. and then those that are present are supposed to take the journey and since it's just the two of us it's basically one reads and the other journeys. Yeah. So we tried to, I remember that we tried recording, right. but I don't think that we actually listened to it to see what yeah, we could I don't do. Think so. But this is so long. It is. It's very long. And Which honestly, is not a bad thing because a lot of, a lot of meditational journeys are good to be long. But I guess, I guess what I would rather do is take a journey a shamanic journey as I've learned to do mm -hmm. and, and work with Odin and just say, okay, today let's focus on this. And I've actually done that mm -hmm. in the past. I've done journeying with Odin to learn about insert a room right. and stuff. Right. And that works well. And I've actually gotten insight because that's one thing, you know, let's, let's try to like cap this up. Was there 
was there something else specifically that you wanted to share? Oh yeah, there was. Um, okay, why don't you share that? There was the then... uh, there was the after you do the ritual and and the meditation and everything. This this particular one has a returning to the world, thanking the gods and goddesses, and I wanted to read that because I thought it was very very interesting. <clears throat> Praise to the gods, praise to the goddesses, grace be to earth that givest to all. Thanks offer Odin and honor. Thanks offer Thor and honor to Odin, the word and will that ward the world. Thank, let us now thank the powers which have protected us. Um, I, and it goes on to thanks, thank the elementals. Ymir, whose body has upheld us, a gear opener of ocean, Logi, Lord of Fiery Light, Kari, wind, carrying winds of wisdom, Jatnar, primal powers protecting, be blessed bright ones in your domains. So I thought that was a very good ending to the ritual. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so in, let's just take a moment to make it personal and not, and not referencing anything. Sure. Because there's so many meetings and all that, what do you... Okay, first of all, let me ask you this. In your practice with the rooms, do you use them for divination? I actually, other than pulling a room here and there for um, uh, our, our Sabbaths, I don't. Um, to, I don't. I think originally that's not what the rooms were meant for. They were meant to record things or in as, as magical purposes. And so in my practice, what I use them for is for magic. Um, I think I've talked about my dog fence before, but let's talk about it again. So um, I, I had an issue with somebody that I really didn't want to have an issue with. And um, I wanted to make sure that my home and my family was protected. Mm -hmm. So I made some rune stones using a bind rune, which a bind rune is basically you take several runes and you put them together with a specific purpose. And I made, I don't even know how many of these I made. And I buried them around my property and I charged them to keep out anyone who would come to do harm and to keep peace and, and harmony and joy in, in my property. And so I've used it for that, and I've used it for um, gifts for people. I've made bind runes um, to use as pendants, um, things of that nature. Uh, but I don't use them for divination. I Sometimes I've pulled them, I, I have in the past, and I'd like to, again, in the future, pull one a day to see, okay, what, what do I need to think about today? But I don't know that I would necessarily consider that divination. Um, that's what I've been doing. I, I pull one a day. With the intent of what do I need to think about? Right. And I have, I haven't done meditational work with all of them yet, but I have done some journeying, you know, asking Odin father, you know, it, it, and having conversations about them. Mm -hmm. And what does it mean for me? Um, and not that's what it boils down to, really. What does it mean for you? Right. And not not to specifically not to specifically come up with my own set of whatever, you know, my own set of meanings or whatever. But, you know, there we're looking at what, three or four sources. And luckily, like with Ann Sue's communication keeps coming up. Right. So that that is likely that it's a broad spectrum right. good thing. Right. But on But other aspects of it don't always correspond right. to that. Because like like yeah, like Thurzaz was a little bit cloudier. Mm -hmm. Um when you talk about when you talk about different people's, you know, study of them and things of that nature. Well so, and here's another thing to throw out there. The runes were created how many centuries ago? How much of that original meaning is pertinent to our lives with everything going so fast and the internet and TV and, you know, mm -hmm. you, you have to look at these runes and what do they mean to you and what they mean to you might not be what they mean to me. And I don't, I don't necessarily agree with you and that's, well, that's they, okay. There's, there's a basic meaning to all of right. them, but you have to look at right. how they incorporate it into your life. Right. Well, in the, the, here's how I look at it. There's a basic meaning and and if you're if you're looking at like a daily kind of I'm I'm learning from you and and 
asking you to help me in my daily, you know, snapshot of life. Mm -hmm. Okay. If in my life I am, I've got a lot going on and I'm, you know, worried about multiple things and, and I'm just like throwing out a, for mm -hmm. example, if I've got a lot of stuff going on and things are really chaotic and I'm worried about, you know, something that, you know, might not necessarily, it, it's important, but maybe it's not important, important. Um, you know, and if I've got a lot of this going on in my head, if I'm, if I pull a rune and for example, I get Fehu, then Fehu to me is a reminder that because Fehu is about those basic survival needs, right? Having what you have, right? To having survive. what you absolutely need to survive, right? Everything else is cotton candy other than that. Right. So that is a reminder to me that, you know, that simplification is okay. Right. Don't get, um, don't get washed up in the, in all of the details. Right. You know, handle one thing at a time, you know. So for, that's how I look at it. I look at it as, you know, these are basic tenants that are universal. But you're using it in a way that means something to you. Right. That's what I mean. Well, yeah. And that, yes. But I'm, I don't think that those universal meanings, I don't believe that those universal meanings have lost their place. Well, yes and no. Because the universal part of it has not. But we don't have the aurochs that would give us everything that we needed to survive. Right. Our society has changed. Mm -hmm. So yes, the, the basic meaning is there, but we have to apply it in a different way than the people who came up with the runes applied it. Mm -hmm. That's my point. The basic tenet is there, but we don't use it in the same way because we don't, we don't live in a forest and hunt or ox and fight Vikings or whatever. We have right. to, we have to apply it in a way that is pertinent to our life today. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that if you get Fehu, it tells you to slow down because you're going too many places. That's you applying that to your day, your daily life now. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. So the tenet is there. It's, it's actually, the meaning is there, mm -hmm. but you have to find how to apply it to your life. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so now that we've talked way over time, well, not really. It's interesting. So it is interesting. <laughs> it's an interesting topic. Runes are always interesting. Right. So let's let's wrap things up. Yeah. I'll pick it up. <laughs> so that's gonna be it for this week. Right. Um so we will we'll be back next week with a new podcast. I'm like I'm like trying to get my head ready to wrap up. Uh, <laughs> so until next time, thank you for walking the path a little bit with us. And until we see you again, blessed be. Blessed be.